Okay, Tuesday morning in the kingdom, but it's actually Monday morning because yesterday we celebrated our Sunday on Monday and this morning I woke up and it is Monday. It doesn't matter if it's Tuesday because it is Monday in the kingdom. Yes, because the sewer line is frozen. Yes, I'll be Cousin Eddie out there playing with the sewer line today and having fun. But the sewer will be frozen, not like a Cousin Eddie having it in liquid form. Oh, well, that's the joys of living remote. Yes, we haul the water and we deal with frozen sewer lines. I can't wait till I'm retired or how would you say incapacitated and I'm at Shady Pines retirement home. And then if it doesn't flush, it's somebody else's problem. Yes, Toby Keith. Yes, the maintenance man. That was a good song. Yes, call the maintenance man. He can fix it. He has a tool for everything. Yes. All right, now let's back to the regular scheduled programming because I'm having a shitty day. Yes, it is going to be shitty playing with frozen poop. Oh, well, I chose to live up here after the great divorce. But if I was still married and living in the suburbs down south, I'd be this old guy wearing shorts and mowing my grass three times a week and looking forward to family suppers on Sundays where you get to meet and greet all the little grandchildren and stuff. Yeah, right. All right, so this morning we woke up to minus 20 Celsius, but feels like minus 28. Yes, good day to play with poop. Okay, on the yo-yo scale, minus 4 Fahrenheit, but feels like minus 18. Ooh, that's so warm. All right, let's see if the me phone can handle the warm temperatures as we back up to see the sunshine, which is not there. Yes, we're cloudy, overcast, icky day perfect day to play with frozen poop and then we'll scroll this way i untangled the flags oh yes australia's that flag right there they are celebrating flag day down there so i should take a picture of their flag at the end of the world in wilderness alaska yes here we go oh but in northern manitoba i have to say that disclaimer i could defend people like i usually do all right look at the wood stove there Yes, we're just pumping the recycled wood into it. Yes, it's okay for the people of Whoville to burn a building down each week. Yes, in Whoville all summer. But that's okay. But for us to burn the shingles and everything in the wood stove, that's a sin. Oh, well. Too bad. So sad. It's called survival. Anything from heat for heat goes. Yes, anything goes. All right, I better put the me phone back in because I was talking about warmth and heat and everything. All right, there, the me phone's back in where it's warm. And here comes the boss. Okay, the other day it was National Flag Day in Australia, but due to the social media and stuff like that, I'm about two days late finding out. So it's only appropriate we show the Australian viewers that we have an Australian flag in Wilderness, Alaska, but in Northern Manitoba. For the viewers on TikTok, I'm not allowed to reply to any of my comments or posts on TikTok. And I was putting a little happy face to like a comment when a viewer did reply, but now they're removing that. But oh well, it's been three months I guess I've been in the penalty box. Oh well, welcome to the joys of the new world. Okay, 11 o'clock in the kingdom, and this is where the sewer line always freezes. It's only frozen about four feet up, and that's because there's a little dippity doo in there. And as the toilet paper comes coming down, it kind of hooks, but that's no problem. I should have flushed it out knowing it was going to get cold. Flushing it out means lots of hot baths. Okay, so what we're doing here is I had to spend an hour to organize everything because we don't have the adapters for this because we changed the sewer tank and everything around this summer. So, okay, everybody brace yourself. I'm going to pull the insulation back. All right, there we go. So we have a... 1500 watt element in here and then it's kind of duct taped and everything together because you have a steel element or couplers and we're duct taping it to the three inch um, black pipe or whatever the tarp straps are holding everything tight okay and before we even started we drilled a hole as far as we can get up in there so there's a two foot three quarter inch hole no it's a one inch hole and that is to allow for water to rise so what we're doing is we don't have the electrical plug for this end because most likely it's a semi thermos or heating pad or element so most likely a semi truck driver fried out his electrical contact that screws on there so me being a nice guy i gave him my cord 
right? Probably never got paid and he never returned it, so I had to jimmy rig this up. Yes, that is water dripping there, but that's okay. This is wilderness Alaska in northern Manitoba. This is all about survival. So what is happening now is this is warm. Can you feel that, Les Nessman? And I add water here. Okay, so I pour water in there to keep the system full. If I was to try it with straight ice in the system, it won't work. You have to have a water base in here to get warming and circulating, okay? So I should have this sewer line thawed out by three o'clock this afternoon and then just hook up all the pipes. The other pipes that go here, I put in the shop and they're by the wood stove thawing out. So that's the joys. And this is why we use the tarp straps and the boards for we can whip these things on and off. Back in the day, I was young and foolish. I screw nailed the top on, siliconed it, everything like that. What a nightmare that was when this sewer line freezes up. But we're used to this. This is called survival, living remote at the end of the world. All right, I better go have, pour a coffee and keep uh, monitoring this situation. Ooh, that's a big word, monitoring. Okay, just about lunchtime in the kingdom and I just did a retape on here because it was taped and now it's warm okay so then the tape was getting loose so i retaped it and pulled and yanked on that electrical tape like you would not believe my drips have slowed down quite a bit and if i run my hand up the pipe okay up in the insulation part there you can feel it getting warm so this pro project is going very well i'm very pleased i'm not stressing on having to rip all the line out to thaw it out this worked, this system's worked before and we're gonna use it again now that we made all these adapters. All right, let's go have some lunch. Hey, what's up everyone? Sir Rodney live from Westrand's parts department. I just wanna do a quick video here. You're gonna see today that Joey's lines were frozen up. So it's basically the same thing on your truck as well. Here we got a glass of frozen water. She's frozen solid. I'm going to take some of that right there, Power Service Diesel 911. If you're already frozen, that's what you need in your truck. Before you get froze up, that's some preventative maintenance right there, safety brake. And you want to use safety brake as opposed to methyl hydrate because safety brake will not dry up any O-rings. So I'm going to pour some of this Power Service into this frozen water here. And we'll show you what it looks like in a second. All right, part two of this video. This was literally in here for 20 seconds. Okay. We'll bring her over here to the bathroom. 20 seconds. Power service was in there. You can already see the ice is breaking up. Look at this. There it is. So that shows you that if you don't use that, you're going to have to use that. And that stuff works fast. That was literally 20 seconds. Melted the ice, get you back on the road. So hopefully Joey's got some of that for his frozen lines. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Okay, this morning once we got the sewer line thawing thingy me bum heat element yeah we'll call it the heat element the sewer line heat element that's a big word okay we're gathering up pieces that we're going to need here in the shop for the 38 gmc i went to the parts trader there's the brand new uh three prong light thingy me bobs for the lights because we know that those ones are going to be old and rusted and rotten but also too they're for the flasher too so that's knowledge there shared here on the king of obsolete channel that the three prong headlight bulb thing works on the flasher too but that's the common sense they made one thing one size fits all so this is a tray of nuts and bolts and everything that was for the 38 gmc i think we started that little tray in 2020 the great lockdowns so i come over here thinking that these go on here and these are the latch things for the hood okay we'll back up there's the latch for the handle for the latch but the only problem is there's no paint markers on here. So I'm questioning this, you know, because I'd mark everything. So then I bolted one on the other side. And look at that over there. It's too short, just like my honeymoon. So I don't think these are the latches for this truck. But I don't think us moving the grill shell ahead 
two inches is affecting this. Something's wrong. And we do know that this is the 38 GMC hood because there's holes in the hood for the GMC uh, logo or nameplate on the side, okay? So that's the only hood we got because the Chevy hoods have a split down the side here with air vents or whatever in them. So it's pretty obvious that this is for the 38 GMC and it's the hood that's always been on it. And same with the grill shell and everything here. So this is more confusing. I don't know where those pieces went. I might have to go wandering around and look in the parts and see if I misplaced them. But at my age, that's probably something I do now. Okay, as I wait for the water line or the sewer line to thaw out, wow, I'm breaking out in a sweat watching it happen. Yes, that's an expression because I'm in the shop here and the wood stove is putting out some good heat. So I took the headlights apart because we don't need this piece on top, so we'll fill in that hole, okay, because we're not running the turn signals on the headlights because back in the day you had six volts and this little sucker flashing, the person can see it. Now we're running halogen 12 volt headlights you cannot see that we always make sure our turn signals are at a different location on the vehicle because the days of having the turn signal or marker light on the headlight are long gone and over here i saved and marked these these are the thingy bobs that went on top of the headlights are for the kbih trucks i don't know the year and they're right there so if somebody wants to send me a jar of uh peanuts or peanut butter you can have these for free I'll gladly mail them to you. All right, so I organized everything. And that's definitely not my wiring. So most likely they used this pigtail off of a car because that was what they did back in the day. But we put on the new pigtail and we ground everything. And I mean ground everything. These headlights originally were grounded inside here. Oh, that one doesn't have it. Right there. Okay. So then that creates a lot of problems because you're trying to ground through here. All right. And that's a movable rusted piece. We found that out on the twins, the TD9s, when we put those lights in. We having trouble getting ground to go through there. So we had to run a jumper wire. But we ground everything separately. And I think I'll put my skidoo suit on or my winter clothes and go check on the heat line or the sewer thaw mechanism. And then I can go look for the pieces over here i don't know where they are i hopefully i can find them if not i have a plasma cutter and a welder i will make them okay it's two o'clock in the kingdom and that means that this how would you say sewer line heater thingy me bob's been on here for three hours exactly so i got out the thermo laser gun so let's see what we got the measurements will be in celsius i'll put uh thingy at the bottom there showing what the actual temperature is in fahrenheit i can't change over back and forth because i have to work quickly here all right let's see what the snow is okay the snow is minus 22 22.6 23 oh i gotta hold it steady that's gonna be a problem because i'm sober all right let's check the pipes all right brace yourself everyone Okay, the problem I have now, none of this is, how would you say, tied together or whatever property clamps. So we have water coming from higher up, pushing down now. So now I know that the water line's thawed and it's quite warm. Yes, yeah, quite warm. Let's check and see what our temperature is down here. Ooh, plus 47, 48 Celsius. All right. We'll take the top off here okay let's see if we can do this here oh trying to get the laser lined up dr evil 72 celsius yes yeah, it's, it's quite warm and the pipe i don't know if we can see what we got here i should have a film crew like in the bedroom all right so that pipe there is 65 66 i think the water inside's good and also too i felt the pipe up by the house and it's warm all right so let's take this apart and hopefully the sewer line is thawed out okay coffee time in the kingdom and that worked out very well for three hours being on okay it heat the, heated the water up pretty good and it was rising up so there's only one section in the sewer pipe that freezes after that frozen section 
the pipe, the sewer box is well insulated. It's still in liquid form. Okay. So all I did was pull this off and catch everything in the pail. So there was only less than five gallons in that distance. And there was lumps to come out because there was cylinder frozen stuff because the pipe would warm up and then the stuff in the center, it just slid right out. So very impressed. If I had left it probably six hours, it would have came out all in liquid form. So I was able to clean out the pipe, hook everything back up, wrap the insulation around, tuck it all good, and we're good till the next time it goes to 40 below zero. All right, let's go have some coffee. Oh, maybe I'll ask Sir Rodney for the proper end there because that's a little tricky. You know, here it is, 120 volts of electricity going in there and it's dripping water. Just a minor detail. Okay, after coffee in the kingdom and also too, I forgot to explain the last pipe that comes out of the sewer box to the septic tank or whatever, it uh, freezes all the time. We call it layer freezing. So if your tap drips or a little bit of water goes down because it's kind of a flat system or a pipe or whatever, we change it out all the time. So that's, we know that. So we just wrap it in uh, pink insulation with the duct tape and it's just quick and easy. We do not run uh, heat tapes or anything like that. That's a waste of money and time. We tried that for the first 10 years living up here. Every time you turn around, the heat tape quit or big drama. So we've learned how to do it without. And also too, the septic tank and poo creates heat. So the heat from the septic tank or the poo rises up onto the uh, sewer pipe. As long as it's well insulated, you don't have a problem. But this pipe here, we change it out. So like we see it layering up, we just change it out. And the insulation and duct tape is the simplest way. So it's just thawing out here. We'll put it in the shed and we'll keep an eye or monitor the other one we installed today. It'll start layering up, we change it out. All right, so that today was a very good production day. We sat back, relaxed, work smarter, not harder. Tuesday morning in Whoville, it's almost 8.30 a.m. and I'm getting ready to head to work. The street lights are still on. It looks like it's actually trying to snow. The weather network says we're still out of an extreme cold warning, so that's pretty good. And it is warming up, so you know what that means. It's going to snow. Now it's time to let the dogs back in and head to work. Just after 12.30, I'm getting ready to head back to work. I forgot to do a video when I got home for lunch, but that's okay. I am subbing grade 3, 4 all day today, so that's extra money for me. And I'm actually doing pretty good with them. It is a jump from grade 1 yesterday, that's for sure. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs back in, and get to work. 4 o'clock and I'm just getting off of work. I had a good day subbing grade 3 and 4 all day. I had 12 kids in the morning and I had 17 kids this afternoon, so that was a lot for me. I learned a few things and I hope they learned something too. Now it's time to get the skidoo out and head on over to the kingdom and see what my dad's up to. Almost 4.30 and I just made it to the kingdom. Now I'll head down to the shop and see what my dad's up to. I'm pretty sure it's just another shop day. It is getting pretty warm out here and it's actually trying to snow. I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera here, but let's head on down to the shop and see what he's up to. Little after 4.30 and my dad's not doing much in the shop other than working on the grill and stuff. So I'm going to head on back into Whoville and get my fire going and do the weather. Not sure what I'll have tonight. I did grab some rice from here, so maybe I'll have rice and something else. Almost 5 o'clock and I just made it back from the kingdom. I already put the skidoo away. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs out and do the weather. I have Johnny coming tomorrow with our dog food and some work clothes for me. So I'll have to wait for that in the morning. But after that's done, I'll be going to work at the school. 5.30 and this is the temperature we're sitting at today. It's negative 15 degrees Celsius, which is 5 degrees Fahrenheit. We even have the feels like on the bottom. It's been pretty warm out today and it's trying to snow. I'm sure by the time I wake up in the morning, there'll be a bunch of snow out and then it'll get cold again like always. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs back in because I can hear them crying, make supper and end my day. Okay, seems how it's after coffee in the kingdom. We're back to a production day here of working. So now we need some creativity. So we'll be drinking the titty vodka and cherry kool-aid we couldn't really drink when we were working with the septic tank or the sewer line because we have to keep our brains and wits about us because we don't want to make more of a mess all right so now we're going to figure out we brought in some different sizes of pipes and everything like that we have the lights all set apart and organized so we're going to figure them out a little bit too but we're going to figure out we need to keep this from collapsing okay i could whip up the original plate and you reutilize these holes or whatever and stuff like that no Let's just put a pipe in here so the 
headlight is compressing not on here on the pipe to the to the actual rad cradle all right let's keep it simple we'll fill these holes in i think this rad shroud uh grill grill cradle oh the grill cradle oh the, the grill whatever we're gonna take it off and probably do some more serious welding here yes we need some vodka so we can speak a fluent english okay we're utilizing the vent on the wood stove so we got some hot coals in there so we're sticking this conduit in here to try and get a piece to make a hood ornament i don't want to use the original one so i think i got the right curve i'm not sure it's hard to tell but for us to make it we're heating it and then sticking it in the winch of the d6 okay so this is the way we're rolling it like this back and forth back and forth and stuff like that or we can go the other way so this is how we do it at the end of the world uh adapt improvise and overcome that was clint eastwood in heartbreak ridge that was a good film he talked funny during the filming but that was good so now we got a close enough piece now to build a hood ornament for the hood so it's gonna fill in that big gap and it'll look good okay this is where the hood ornament will go right here because it was just too big of a gap and stuff and we can incorporate it into the little bushing thingy me bob we built over there so we've been doing some welding here okay so this is when we removed the the turn signals from the kb international lights here but by the time i fill this hole this hole this hole and this hole we still have this indentation here so by the time i booger weld those holes shut i'm better off booger welding oh i forgot my piece okay i used my pink file folder i made a template and then i cut it out okay all right so now i'm booger welding all the way around okay i'm finding out this is where gasless wire is pretty limited i also made some mistakes i didn't have this pressed right down i had too high a heat as soon as i touched it it went zoop that was gone but over here i was getting better because i learned that's the whole idea is learning so i've got this thing down to the heat of one and 10 on the wire feed or whatever it is i'm below that so it's trial and error also too the fact that i'm using 1930s 40s style material on these headlights okay that's what the age of the vintage is i'm also using quality made american steel yes american steel this is a 48 dodge two-door sedan that we cut up for well scrap metal it was pretty rusted and we're using this material from the body panels so it's the same material grade or whatever that we're using i just have to learn how to do it okay and over here like a good body man should be able to fill in after i smooth this out and stuff just a skim a bondo or body filter over should be able to do it not like my forty two thousand dollar promo bike which is basically a bondo bucket they put bondo everywhere that was the 70s when the bondo came out it was the new craze because they went from lead body filler to bondo so that promo bike has bondo everywhere on the frame everywhere and look at how thick it is right just freaking unreal so i think i can do a better job at the end of the world using my how'd you say handler 100 hobart welder and my pro point uh 30a plus welder i mean plasma cutter from princess auto and just play around i think i'm getting better i'm improving and that i credit the bond um, oh i credit my improvements on the vodka just can't speak with it okay six o'clock in the kingdom and i learned how to weld yes it's frustrating because i grew up in the world where we mig weld with gas and these little projects is so simple like we never batted an eye because we had the gas okay plus we hauled it the 12 hours or whatever round trip from thompson to the kingdom and stuff so now we have to learn okay i made a mistake on this one big time i got carried away buffing and cleaning and everything like that i made a hell of a mess okay and the reason why i made a hell of a mess look at my wire wheels like these are all industrial welding stuff like this is not soft and whatever so probably every time i was cleaning the weld those wheels or the bristles on that was probably moving removing probably a nose hair width of material from the steel right 
So I'm buffing away, plus I got the old uh, angle grinder there with the California flapper disc going. So I probably vaporized the thickness of the material. So I had lots of problems on that. This side here, my heat was turned right down. I stayed focused and just did a series of puddles. I blew through a couple of places, but that's okay. We, uh, we might have to use silicone for a cover pass. It's pretty bad, but we're learning. Can we admit our mistakes or whatever? Like when I said I do. Okay, and then over here to finish out the evening. Look at that. Custom made in the wood stove. Burning the shingles from the staff's garage. Yes, it fits nicely. We just have to put some bracketry on and finish up there. So that fills in this gap here. So that makes it look pretty. Ooh, I shouldn't have used that word. It's not very manly. All right, let's go check on the flags. Okay, we're done for the day and I forgot to plug the yard light in. Oh, I'm getting old and slipping and forgetting these things. All right, we had a successful day today. We made a thing to thaw out the sewer line. So making that thing saved us time for the next time it freezes up. Yes, it'll be next week. And also too, we had a good day welding and learning. Okay, and in honor of Australian Flag Day, there is the Australian flag at the end of the world. Yes, in its natural state of being limp like all the others. All right, let's go walk the dogs, uh, drink some beer, make a video, and we'll talk to you guys later.